Hey everyone, Kevin here. What I've got here is my GoPro 6, or the GoPro Hero 6 to give it its full name. So it's a little lens cap I got with the screen protector. It comes with this housing, USB charging cable, etc. I did all that with the unboxing, so please do check that out if you want to see what comes with the actual camera. But what I want to do in this video is talk about the design show you the menu system, show you how it works, etc. and show you the app. I've only been using it for a day or so, but I do have a general understanding of how the menu works, etc. But I will be doing different videos where I'll be talking more about, you know, the actual footage, how it works and things like that. So, after a day, what are my initial impressions of the design? I think the design is good. It's very compact. The design is a GoPro 5. You know, if you've got a GoPro 5, you know what to expect. This is a consistent design. This is what they've been using for the last few years, this kind of form factor. Um, so, for those of you who haven't used it before, you've got the... I'll bring this up, sorry. Uh, you've got the shutter button, the record button at the, the top there. You've got the power mode button at the side. This is your battery cover that I'll show you that in a second. And you've got the other cover there for the HDMI cable and the USB charging cable. Now, first part of the design I don't like, this battery cover. I'm finding that it's a little bit of a pain to get open. And I find that the way that I'm holding it to slide it open, maybe I'm just not doing it right, but when I'm sliding it open like that, sometimes I'm pushing the button by accident. See, I switched it on there. I didn't want to. Inside you've got the battery and you've got the micro SD card slot. I just feel it's, it's just a little bit, I don't know, it's just a bit tighter than I'd like it to be. I realise, you know, it, it kind of has to be that way, you know, to make it waterproof. And here you've got the HDMI port and the USB Type-C port. Now this little part here, if I be gentle, can I be? This actually pops off, there we go. Now, the reason that pops off is because for many frames, for many cases, which I'll hopefully be able to show you now, there is a space there. And that's why this can be taken off, so that you can put them in cases and frames like this and charge it. And I think that's quite good. It's good that they can do that. Though, just be careful because it does pop off um, sometimes when you don't want it to. Cups back on. It does look like this could break easily right enough. I will say that. So when I was uh, trying to get this battery cover off, it has turned on. So this is the menu system. And it's very, very simple, actually. Very, very simple to use. You've got all the different resolutions and things at the bottom. You can pull down to get settings. You pull across to get any media that you've recorded. And you pull this way to get just quick settings. So for whatever you're using just now, whatever, like for example, I've got it set as 4K, 24 frames per second, wide. When I go to the side, you'll see video stabilization, etc. Now, for example, when I jump to 60 frames per second, I've got 4K, 60 frames per second, wide. And this information is shown at the front as well. 4K, 60 frames per second. The two refers to two files there. Four hours uh, time left on in the micro SD card recording time. This is a 128 gigabyte card that's in here. I think it's about 121 gigabyte usable. And there's a, an idea of the battery life. The battery life is 90% there. And after a day, or so, in fact, not even after a day, after a few hours, I realized how bad the battery life on this is. It's really, really awful. It really is. Um, maybe because I was doing some clips in 4K, but this thing burns battery like it's just unbelievable. It's a very disappointing aspect of it, and I can see why it's almost like they've done it on purpose to sell extra batteries. But um, when I've selected it now, 4K, 60 frames per second, you can see that video stabilization is temporarily disabled. Temporarily disabled. You will find that with a lot of settings. You'll find a lot of, you know, when you change the resolution to a higher resolution, certain things get switched off because the feature isn't available. Stabilization being the one thing. So, although one of the best things about this camera is the fact that it can do 4K at 60 frames per second, 
because of the lack of video stabilization, I might lean towards lower resolutions. So it's the same here, you've got wide, but if I had to drop down to 2.7K, for example, I've got linear, I've got wide, and I've got super view. And yeah, it's obviously hard for you guys to see that in the camera, but in fact, let's get something, I'll show you. Linear is like a regular camera, wide, super wide. So it's really easy to do that. Uh, when you push on the little recording symbol, you can change like the video video mode there, video, looping, photo, nighttime, burst, and then you've got time lapse, photos, and videos. And the the little line you can see at the top gives you an idea of where you have to pull it down. Now the mode button, very quick, photo, burst, time lapse photo, video. So you quickly change through those settings like that. That's it. And when you want to record, that's it. Now, if I pull down the settings for a second, there is a, a cool option here uh, that's got voice command, and you'll see this at the top. There's a lock thing there, auto lock. If I turn on voice command, on, UK English. Let's see if they can understand Scottish. Um... Okay, so there is a list of commands here. You can see this here, GoPro, start recording, highlight, stop recording, take a photo, shoot burst. There's lots of different things here you can do. Turn it off. So let's go back. GoPro, start recording. GoPro, start recording. GoPro, stop recording. So... It does seem to work quite well, but when I did the initial test with this, and I did the video yesterday where I gave you my first impressions of it, I found that for whatever reason, I was starting the video with GoPro start recording, and then after like two minutes, it would just stop. And it seems to be because of this voice command thing. I don't know if there's certain words, or it just hears, you know, it hears the person talking, and it just gets mixed up. Whatever the reason is, I've turned it off because it was cutting off video clips too early. So in, in theory, this is a great feature, but in practice, it just seems like they've not got it there yet. And it happened two or three times. And at the end, I was like, right, I'm just switching this off because it's useful, but not to the point where clips are stopping recording before you want them. So the connections here, you've got the app, you've got the Wi-Fi. Probably should turn off the Wi-Fi, etc. when I'm not using it to save battery. Camera information. I'll show you the app in a second. Preferences is what I want to show you just now. So it's got a camera tour, and you get this when you first turn it on. It just goes, goes through and tells you where everything is. Preferences at the top. Media. There we go. So you can change the time here. You can change the date, date format, on, com on camera voice control. I've got it English language, all the list of commands for it. You can change the beat level, LED, whether it's on. Um, so you could turn the LED off when you're recording if you want to save battery life. That's something else I could do. Um, well, I, I think that's what it's referring to, the LED. Oh, that's sorry, that's the blinking lights. Quick capture, default mode, I've got it set as video. Auto off, you know, you can turn these things off. Five minutes, ten minutes and things. Very, very easy. Screen saver brightness level, auto rotation, GPS. It's very easy as well. You know, once you go into a setting, you just do that. It's touch screen. Very, very easy to use. GPS is maybe something that burns off battery as well. I need to look more into this to see how I can optimize battery life. Um, I've got it set as NTSC simply because uh, it offers 60 frames per second. When you change the PAL, you change uh, to 50 and 25. FPS instead of 60 and 30. I might change it in the future uh, and I might have to because my other cameras have been set to 50 frames per second so I'll maybe change that in the future but it's very easy to change. You just go in there and you just change it. HDMI output, uh, audio input is what I'll be looking at next week when I get my uh, external mic adapter and down here you can format the card, factory reset and check the camera defaults and you, you can reset all like when you do that, 
it, it will keep things like the password and camera name, etc., but it'll reset everything else. So let's look at the app and you can see there, because of this, the way this lens is, it doesn't sit, you know, like that. That's not a problem. So got the camera app here, GoPro. Being very slow here. Ah, I think it was actually, did you see it was black screen there? I think it was just showing, like if I do this, that might be better. I'll face this up the way. So once it's connected, you, you can actually use this as a preview and you can see there. Yeah. So this gives you a, a lot of information and all the settings that you change in your GoPro can be changed here as well. You can see here that I've got it set as 2.7K, 60 frames per second and wide and it's got the other settings there about light, etc. You can zoom in and out as well there. Then when you click on the, the settings part, this is where you can change everything. Resolution, frames per second, voice control. Now, all of these are on the GoPro itself, but you know, there's, there will be times when you'll be recording when you could be five or six feet away or something like that. You could be away from the camera and you can control everything here and change things easily. So basically, it's just this is just a repeat of all the, the settings I've just went through. You can locate the camera as well, which will beep it if you need to find it. And there's other options here for connecting a Bluetooth device. Uh, I've not tried it yet, but I'm going to try and see if I can get it working with like selfie sticks, etc. Hopefully that will work. That's uh, got the battery level. Look, at, down to 83% already. I haven't even recorded any other clips and it's went from 90 down to 83 in the last 10 minutes. It's quite poor. Obviously the, the screen uses up a lot, so that's something I might have to look into turning off. So you can record from here as well and you can view your clips. There's other things in the app as well. You can upload and create stories, etc. This is a, a big part of it, uh, quick stories. This is like their feature they are try to push. But for me, it's really about controlling the camera. So it's quite a useful app to have. You know, it's um, not the best app in the world, but you, you can create videos from it. Um, oh, you can see I've got an, an update for the camera as well. I didn't know that was going to pop up. Adds HDR mode, support for the camera control, etc. Add support for the GoPro 3.5 millimeter mic, uh, which allows external microphones. Well, I definitely need that, but I will install that in a bit. So that's good to know. I thought that was uh, already uh, available through it. So, you know, you could saw everything could be changed there. Oh. Okay, this is another problem. And this is something I didn't talk about. Oh, there it's there. I found out it was a few times yesterday, a couple of times when it just froze. And the only way for me to stop it freezing was to take it out, uh, the battery cover, and take the battery out. It's a little bit annoying. I don't know what was causing it. I don't know if it's a software issue. Hopefully it will be fixed. The battery dropping down again. <laughs> um, okay, so when you're actually using this, a lot of the time, if you're changing the resolution, etc., this is what you'll be doing. You can do 4K, but you can see here, if you do 4K, when you change the resolution, see it's freezing again. Oh. So now when I try to do 240 frames per second, it isn't supported. It's not supported at 4K. It will tell you what's supported and what isn't supported. Same 4K, 4.3, not supported 60 frames per second. 2.7, fine, and you get 120 frames per, uh, per second at 2.7K, but you can see 240 is kind of greyed out. So you need to pay attention to what's greyed out and what isn't. Probably the most options at 1080p, you can go up to 240 frames per second. In fact, I think, can you maybe do that 1440p? Yep. 1440p as well. No, it's not. It's not supported. <laughs> um, so it's 1440p. You need to drop down to 120 frames per second, just like 2.7k. Overall, though, it's very, very easy to use. 
Um, you can see video stabilization is on at this mode, auto, low light, manual audio control. The audio control will switch between um, stereo and wind. Now, the reason I'm buying an external microphone is it's terrible. This thing is terrible for audio. It picks up everything. It's too sensitive. Now, I didn't know this, and I would go as far as saying the audio is practically unusable. It's that bad. It's quite disappointing in, uh, for me because the whole point of this is to keep it in a small form factor. But unfortunately, GoPros, I've seen everyone complain about it since, you know, uh, on the GoPro 5 and the GoPro 6, the audio is bad, which is why I will be creating some sort of mad kit with an external microphone and a large external microphone adapter. And the adapter is about half the size as this. So it's a little bit annoying, but that's what you have to deal with. The reason it's annoying me is because this is my old Sony Action Camera, the Action Cam Mini. And, you know, this is still relatively small. This never had the same problem with audio. This had really good audio. It didn't pick up any noise from the tripod, from the selfie stick, or anything like that. This didn't have any problems like that. And this was out three or four years ago. So why is GoPro have... The, I mean, why does GoPro not fix this? This, to me, seems like a major issue that they need to address. If Sony got it right four or five years ago, and as you know, apparently Sony's action cams still do have very good audio. Doesn't surprise me. Um, plus, um, you know, there was more adapters and things like that were cheaper. But if they can get the audio working out of the box in this, why does this not? I mean, you can pick this up second hand, probably, you know, less than a hundred pounds. Why does this five hundred pound, five hundred dollar action camera? Why does this not have good audio? So that's one fr uh, frustrating uh, aspect of the GoPro. It's just something that you need to deal with. And if you're only recording footage for your GoPro for, you know, playing in the background, for playing when music is playing, for doing overhead shots and things like that, audio isn't a concern. You'll be having music playing, so it won't be a, a problem. But I think most people would, you know, they like the idea of, you know, setting this in a tripod or setting it in your car or recording in a helmet or something and doing that without all the handling noise, like the handling noise is insanely bad. So I know I'm kind of going on about it, but it is a major issue and it's something you do need to know before you get the GoPro Hero 5 or 6. I believe the older ones have the same issue as well. But it's quite disappointing that that is the case. 78% battery. So you saw there, I didn't record any, I recorded a two second clip in the last 15 minutes, that's dropped from 90% down to 78% battery, and that's without recording. That shows you how bad the battery life is. This has got an official battery, and this is a day old, and that's the problems that I'm dealing with. So yeah, battery life is bad. Audio is terrible, absolutely terrible. But the actual camera itself is very good. The footage looks decent. It's a small form factor. It's very flexible, and... For me, it, it does open up a lot of opportunities for me to record videos on YouTube because I can use this in so many ways. Once I get the external microphone set up, I can record with this in my car. I can record outside. And not only that, I can record in a lot of different modes. I can record at 4K, 2.7K, 1440p, 1080p, 720p. I can do slow motion video. I can, you know, if I record at 240 frames per second, I can slow it down to uh, 24 frames per second so that, you know, the speed is going a tenth of the speed that it should be going. So it's going to give me a lot of different options for recording videos. And how I'm going to use those things, I don't know. But I think this is going to be useful. Just a pity that the audio situation is so bad. But unfortunately, that that's what you need to deal with. So first impressions about all this, design form factor is great. I think it's a, a great little action camera. The menu system is very, very easy to use. From a recording point of view, audio is bad. Uh, battery life is really poor. But these can be addressed by buying additional batteries and buying the, the large external microphone. So for you guys who are looking to buy the GoPro Hero 6, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know I have kind of mumbled on a little bit about different things but hopefully i've showed you something that you never got from any other videos it's very very similar to the gopro 5 from a dimensions point of view it's identical i think it's a gram difference in weight i believe the menu systems are all the same but really if you can pick up a gopro hero 5 at a slightly cheaper price there is a good argument for going for that if you don't need 
the 4K 60 frames per second or any of the additional features. I'm glad I got this version, but um, there's a lot to be said about saving money sometimes when you're buying recording equipment and things like that because things drop in price and when you pay the premium for getting something newer, sometimes you don't get, you know, you're not really getting your money's worth per se. Thanks for watching, guys. Anyway, I'm going to be doing more videos on this. I've got a, some more equipment coming as well, an accessories kit, housing, external microphone, adapter. I'll be doing some videos about that. So if you get any questions about any of this, please do let me know and I'll do my best to accommodate you and answer any, any questions in the comment area or do a video if necessary. I'll try and get out and do some recording later as well, uh, either later today or tomorrow, and we'll see how this baby performs. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care.